11 10 2017 10 foil hat club scott hensler well tomorrow on the 11th of november honoring veterans for their service Reminds me of uh, 2010 when I was in Mesa, Arizona. <clears throat> I, I was actually living in Coeur d'Alene, but I was down in that area helping out with the ministry. And my father had just days prior been rushed to the hospital. He was taking warfarin Coumadin, and he was bleeding profusely inside and he was there in the hospital till january which is you know quite a few months there from that ordeal and unfortunately he didn't make it and so anytime that i see veterans day it uh, reminds me of that but i also want to you know thank them for their ultimate sacrifice the veterans the ones that did not come back and the ones that did that were injured to the point that they're taking their own lives so what I want to do tonight is I want to go through some things here as a confirmation or reconfirmation of the circumstances that we have and I ask that that you bear with me because this is the understanding of the evil that's in the world that is using our military that has been using our military will continue to use our military with little or no opposition and because of that good men and women young will perish die be destroyed and even take their own lives so the US military deaths now note I said US military deaths let's go all the way back to the Revolution War so in that is an estimated 4,435. Okay, the War of 1812, 2,260 lost their lives. The Indian Wars, well, whatever you want to make of that, because certainly the Indians themselves paid a heavy price, but about a 1,000 of U.S. soldiers being most likely cavalry of some type of, uh, of uh, militia. But in this also we have the Mexican War. Well, there was 13,283 that lost their lives in that. Then we have the Civil War, and then the numbers really jump. 498,332, so almost a half a million. Spanish-American War, 2,446. Well, you know, those are terrible numbers. And as we move up towards World War I, Albert Pike and those rascals who were the instigators of this whole thing, was 116,516. And then we jump into World War II, getting back to pretty much what it was of the Civil War, 405,399. Now, shortly after that, you know, my father was in World War II, and then my his brother, my uncle, was in the Korean War. And that was an estimated 54,246. Now, when we jump up to Vietnam, the original numbers were 58,220 or thereabouts. But because of the problems and the issues that took place with chemicals, We have Agent Orange. We have all of the different things. That number has recently been brought up to 90,220, depending on where you get your information. Then we get to the Persian Gulf War. Well, that was 1,565. The so-called Global War on Terror, you know, thank you, Bush. Iraq and Afghanistan, 6,852. Now, I remember one of the first soldiers that died during that and he was a Tucson resident and when his body was brought back to Tucson and his because he was just a young man his mother died of a heart attack during the service her grief I can't even imagine so you can imagine the loss of life here just think of all the people you would have known that would have been the sons and daughters of these people who have who gave up their lives and you know as I continue here I want you to understand 
that this is all going to continue. Now, we get back to the Civil War in Gettysburg's itself, there were 7,000 and more in the days, few days of fighting with just in that area. I've talked about it before, Pickett's uh, Run, the mass of casualty there, the, the, the creeks flowed with blood. Gettysburg in itself is known to be a, a paranormal area. Well, gee, you know. And by the way, that's pretty much all over the United States. And now we have 1.3 million on active duty right now. Oh, by the way, uh, the total of everything together is about 1.1 million. So that equals San Antonio, Texas, San Diego, California, Dallas, Texas, San Jose, California. Literally each one of those towns with those numbers would just go away, would just disappear. That's how many would perish. Now, we know with today's technology, with nuclear bombs and, and energy weapons, uh, these numbers will sure to increase. Now, again, I mentioned the other night that between 22 and 25 veterans a day commit suicide. That rounds out to about 8,395. Now, I know that these numbers are not included in the loss of life, but they should be. Because they came back damaged. But they've also been infected. They've also been neglected and rejected. They've also been abandoned. And what a terrible thing that is to do with those who serve this country. Now, even though they're serving the country, we, we understand that it's for the New World Order. Dog tags were because they we are the attack dogs. That's where that comes from. I bet you didn't know that. They laugh at us, ladies and gentlemen. They think we're funny. We're nothing more than something that is to go through a paper shredder and how terrible that is. Now, with North Korea escalating, there's 162,742 on Guam. The island of Taiwan itself, which I was there, houses about 22,805,547. Whew, a lot of people. Even China's got missiles pointed at that island. Japan itself has 13 million. Now, isn't that amazing? 13 million. Japan, it's probably a number that's been pretty much the same over the years to think the damage they did. I mean, we're talking about some particular cities in, in the United States or just the state itself that were virtually close to taking over the world. South Korea, now this is where it really gets interesting, there's about 51 million with 10 million in Seoul directly and about 26 in the surrounding area, million people, 26 million people. North Korea has about 25 million, and they brag about all the soldiers that they have and all the weaponry. And as I mentioned <clears throat> about the towns, California in itself as a state has 39,000, Oregon for, or 39 million, Oregon has 4 million, and Washington, the state of, has 7. And those are coastal lines that would be struck by North Korea. So you can imagine the death toll on that. So we go from tens of hundreds to millions in one conflict, dead. And as I mentioned before, those who are infected with demons, those demons will be looking for a new home. Now let's revisit Hiroshima. Now they estimate between 90 and 146,000. It's hard to get that number because they didn't really have statistics. And they were pretty much, you know, on top of each other, the way that they built their houses. Nagasaki was 39 to 80. So we'll just round up potentially, you know, 150,000 and then about 80,000. Half were all killed in the first day. Many of them suffered and lingered for days and weeks and even into years. And by the way, the birth defects still continue. You never hear about that. The dirty bombs, all the nuclear fallout, all the ground that's been tainted, they're still dealing with that. Now, our military is deployed all over the world, 35,000 just in the Middle East alone, leaving us in the United States, the continental United States, to the demise of the New World Order. That is what is going on, and that's one of the reasons that I tried to bring up about the militia, how important the militia is. 
So when we talk about the New World Order, we're talking about FEMA, we're talking about the Department of Homeland Security, foreign troops, basically, you know, acting as if they are UN peacekeepers. At any moment's notice, with boots on the ground here in the United States, are ready for martial law. And believe me, it's coming in one way or another, and, you know, sooner more than later. But in either case, please understand that our military, the ones that have served, the ones that were trained, the ones that are already battle-hardened, that would know that when a gun goes off or so forth to charge in, not to run away, to be the heroes, to be the brave one, to take care of business is who they want to eliminate. They do not want them in this state, in this country, to be at our side during the takeover. So they're doing everything they can. And also the first cleanup crew, meaning that those who have sold themselves out, those who have joined the New World Order, whether they call themselves deputy sheriffs, whether they call themselves state troopers, whether they call themselves police officers, that the UN troops or the mercenaries, whether they're Chinese or Spesnots being Soviet, or any other, that they'll end up taking out the law enforcement. That is the order of things, and that is the way it always has been. We saw this in 9-11 with the first team that was in to make sure that the bombs detonated, to make sure that those things in uh, the Twin Towers and Building 7 finished and completed. Then a crew came in and took them out. And how do we know this? Because the firemen reported Uh, subjects that were in closets and behind stairwells that were in tactical that were assassinated. And when I say assassinated, shot in the back of the head. So the ones, as I mentioned, that were trained and the ones who could fight for us, with us, are strategically or systematically being destroyed. The militia is basically become a dirty word and I as I mentioned that now we have to remember that the militia in Texas were the lifesavers of the hurricane victims because many of them were being escorted onto FEMA ships FEMA buses even taken into specific areas for elimination and because of the Texas militia God bless you guys for what you did men and women because it was both stood and even went barrel to barrel against the FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security and the so-called military. So most listening probably really do not know much about John Birch. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about him. Now, I myself didn't really know a whole lot. I always heard about the John Birch Society. But as I did research and read and discovered, it turns out that John Birch himself was murdered before any John Birch Society was created. And so I kind of want to go through this because he actually was a hero. He actually was a man of his word. He was a Christian. He believed in the Great Commission. He was an evangelist. He spent uh, a great deal of time in China evangelizing. He was one to be there, to serve, to protect, to help, and do as God called him to do. And he was a patriot and a good American. Now, he was not in the military. World War II broke out when he was in China. And the occupation of the Japanese into the Chinese territory were about 3 million. Holy smokes, can you imagine that? 3 million Japanese soldiers in China and believe me the ja- the Japanese were cutting off heads and raping and you name it just as they did you know f- please ladies and gentlemen do not forget the Bataan death march there is a mindset of these other cultures that is in a demonic position now regardless of what's taking place now with with um, with uh, Trump and the armament because the Japanese were never to have their own military This is something that is being done systematically to, again, create another bad guy. So what we have is we have history repeating itself. So most of you know a little bit about the John Birch Society and may think as well just being just like the militia, that it's actually a dirty word or bad people or some or people who are conspiracists or crazy. 
just like us, the ones who know the truth, the ones who are truthers, we are deemed crazy. We are deemed the enemy of the state. And this is exactly what they have done. The CIA and the FBI has been working very hard uh, to make the John Birch Society look like a bunch of wackos. But we must remember that they chose the name because of the honoring of John Birch himself and the hero that he was. So, again, it really is the first truther movement from what I can see. And, again, the CIA and the FBI gang-stalked him. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about uh, um, Paul the Apostle, but today was a realization that he was gang-stalked because of the thorn in his side, that it was a messenger of Satan. What is a messenger? Well, it's a fallen angel. So he was tormented by a fallen angel assigned by Lucifer. So he was gang stalked. So I think he was the first biblical gang stalked as well as Jesus was. Now, John Birch himself had nothing to do with the society that was named after him. Again, remember, he was murdered um, before this came along. That came after his murder by the communist Chinese at the end of World War II. You see, he was a Christian evangelist missionary in China during that time, and so he was doing his best to protect the Chinese people, and he was doing such a good job that the military basically drafted him in for reconnaissance, for intelligence, because he was able to, he knew the, he knew the jungles, he knew the territory, he was able to speak Mandarin Chinese, And so with his communication and cooperation with the Chinese military and the people, he was the perfect one to bring this information back. So as a patriot, he assisted the Chinese and American military to fight against the Japanese. As I mentioned before, Japan had quite an occupation within China. Birch became intelligence. As I mentioned, he was drafted in. And he did such a wonderful job as being declared by as a hero <clears throat> that even the Japanese at the end of the war saw what an honorable and brave man that he was and even in his death they were shocked and surprised now isn't that interesting now as I get into this the, the reason that his name was picked for that society is going to be obvious so when the Japanese were defeated communism came screaming in to China immediately there was a door open China was pretty well devastated there you know the government had was in disarray communism was as a form of dictatorship it is you know it's evil it is luciferianism in its highest form and so as it swept through with a nation that was in disarray it fit right in And so you had the brown shirts, meaning the people who were willing uh, to elevate themselves, thinking that they were going to get a piece of the pie and put themselves into a position of favorability for basically the dictators. So John Birch and a fellow soldier were made a warning to the U.S. And they were, you know, you need to understand that John Birch and his friends and so forth were... Uh, responsible for the saving of many Chinese lives. But the people who became communist, the Chinese, because that is a Chinese communist nation now, and never forget that, that they turned and they actually bayoneted and shot John Birch. The very people he loved, the very people he took care of, the very people he fought to save they turned on him like a junkyard dog and they killed him they killed him and his friend who were trying to establish some kind of peace and order with the communists as they were moving in because you need to remember that the communists were also killing the Chinese people themselves those who wouldn't go along with the program and many were made examples that is the typical regime of communism that is how it always works so the, the selection of John Birch was by no mistake. He was selected as a warning and also being as a Christian 
to the nation of the United States, stay out of China. This is what will happen to you unless you leave us alone. So he was made an example. He was chosen for that reason, a man of integrity, a man of stanima, a Christian, one in his faith. He was killed for that reason to be made an example. All right? So, again, the um, society was not until later. John Birch Society was basically formed after his death and as I mentioned before, being picked because of a Christian and a hero, that as the tables turned on him, it also was the example for the John Birch Society to show that those who say that they have your best interest, the ones who say that you're, they are your friends, the ones that you help, the ones that you love, the ones that you try and take care of, it shows that there's the potential when it comes to power, when it comes to money, when it comes to survival, that anybody is capable of turning. And so this was why John uh, was named for the John Birch Society. He was betrayed. Okay, who else did we see? J Jesus, right? Okay. So just like the ones who say they are out for your best interest, the communists, that is their line saying, you know, join us, be the part of the social group, we'll take care of you, we'll feed you, we'll get you medical but, you know, in the back alleys and behind closed doors, we're going to murder you a little bit at a time until you're completely gone. All right, that's a part of genocide. So the start of the truther movement or the conspiracy theorists moves on from that point. And regardless of your thoughts on John Birch Society, always remember the man that this was named after was doing the great commission of Jesus Christ. Now I bring him up because we need to understand that there are great people who are veterans that we will never know of their heroism. Most of us would not have ever known anything about John Birch if the society had been not named after him. And those listening, maybe some of you know, and maybe you know a little more detail on it. Maybe you've even read and joined some of their stuff. Though I'm not supporting the John Birch, I want to look into a little bit more. I've certainly heard about that ever since I was a young boy from my father. And like anything, there's always been infiltrations. There's always been things that have changed. But again, us as a whole, the ones who, you know, do this show and listen to this show and do the other things that are out there that try and get you the information, that you have to be careful. You have to select. You have to be discerning and go from there. So is a forever representation of who we should be in these last days. Okay? And I and I think that's the way that I'm going to look at that. That someone who again knew who they were, had a love for the people, knew what he was called to do. He didn't just sit on the sidelines. And unfortunately World War II broke out and he found himself in the midst of having to deal with the United States military, the Japanese, as well as the Chinese, and then eventually the communists. But in either form, uh, his name lives on in truth. And so, um, John Birch and your family, God bless you. Now, <clears throat> Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai-shek, communists, all dictatorships, which followed, you know, that uh, were pretty much the responsible parties in allowing John Birch and his death <clears throat> also responsible after this for the murder of somewhere between now I've I, I, for, I had a number rounded off around 90 million but it's somewhere between 88 and 100, 100 million Chinese people in order to put the communist uh, in place to have it become the government to have it become the religion and then, you know, of course, we have uh, the, you know, the, 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 so, the uh, people who are being used for organ harvesting. That continues. These numbers have not stopped. So when you go to Walmart, when you buy that new stereo and that new flat screen, guaranteed that the one who assembled that had a relative somewhere who was murdered during that time. And it basically still continues. It has not changed by their own government. 
Now again, I bring this up because when we have genocide, when we have those who believe that they are the elite, they believe they are the elevated or illuminated ones, the ones that they believe in their narcissistic sick behavior, believe that they have been put in charge and have the right to kill, to rape, to maim, to steal anyone that they want to. And boy, do they. And make no mistake about it, man child of North Korea is no different. Before this, from 1937 to 1945 in China, that the Japanese were responsible alone for killing 14 million Chinese people. So you can understand why the Chinese are not happy about the Japanese. When I was in on the Taiwan Islands, uh, it was reminded to me as I went around in various uh, memorials where the Japanese would take the Chinese as examples and cut their heads off in public. Because it's one of the worst things to do with Asians because of their religion, that in their belief that if they lose their head, that they wander in the earth or on the earth or in the spirit aimlessly and never find peace, to be terrorized, tormented for forever. Now they have different levels of hell. I think they have 12, 13 levels, and I'm sure it has something to do with that. Now these numbers can vary depending on where you look. But depending on where you look, we have to remember that communism, socialism, dictatorship, regardless if it's 5 million or 6 million, that's one person too many for narcissism, for the people who believe that they have the ability or the right to take the life of someone else. So communism, socialism, dictatorship, liberalism, sorry, it's all the same. Death and destruction always follows. Now let's move a little forward over here to Vietnam, the killing fields of communism then, because that's when that came in. Again, the Cambodians alone in that one area referred to the killing fields were 14,000. Now those numbers I know go in the millions in total. Now let's go back to World War II. Let's you know, that's the Pacific. Let's look at the Atlantic. We have Europe. We have Germany. Even after World War II, all the way up to about 1950, about 2 million Germans perished. After the war? What? That's right. There was an exerted effort from the Brits, from the United States, to round up German citizens as well as some of the military, put them in camps, deny them food, deny them water, have them in areas that their, you know, their own waste were part of the disease problem, and they perished. And you need to understand that the Holocaust is a little more complicated than what we've been told, that many of the pictures that you have seen were actually Germans who were after the war that were in the old camps and from <clears throat> during the war was about 4.3 million military Germans that died with about 350 to a half a million uh, civilians so Germany was pretty well devastated so the last thing they needed was 2 million more killed after that now these military style concentration camps that were put in as I mentioned were whether, whether, whether they had Jews in them or not or they built them for the Germans that's how it all ended up and we need to understand that General Patton was murdered to keep this fact quiet he did not cooperate with it he did not want to deal with it he wanted to continue even going against the Soviets because they were just like the communists and being part of that, wanting to take everything they could. And, you know, we even had the Italians. It's weird to think that, but that was a problem and an issue, too. So General Patton, who very well could have came, come back and run for president, was first the first assassin literally tried to break his neck with a type of beanbag fired out of a shotgun type rifle from a staged accident causing his vehicle to slow down so they were going to make it look like it was an accident 
Though it did not complete, did not work, they went ahead and finished the job in the hospital. He was either poisoned or suffocated by another Russian assassin. Because of all the atrocities that were taking place by the United States, they wanted to keep quiet. So, with all these facts, all of these deaths, one thing's in common. Lies, greed, narcissism, sacrifices, murder. In all the name of peace and freedom. In the name of peace and freedom. Nothing could be further from the truth. Period. George Bush Sr., George Bush Jr. are responsible for millions of deaths. All based on a lie. Civilians, military, those things that we were told uh, of weapons of mass destruction were all a lie. And when they couldn't complete it, when they weren't able to succeed, then they generated 9-11. And so then, then we had to go finish the job. And by that, then reestablishing banking systems, taking them off the gold standards, getting to the oil fields, getting to the poppy fields. That's what it was all about. So George Bush Sr. and George Bush Jr., the presidents of the United States, are murderers and liars and should be held responsible. They should be arrested. They should be brought to the courts and they should be tried. Now we can talk about Clinton. We can talk about Obama. We can go all the way back to all the other presidents. You need to remember that any president who's in place, anyone who thinks that Trump is here because God sent him, understand that he's in place because the New World Order wanted him there. He may be the opposite side of the pyramid compared to the Clintons, but again, the pyramid, as it goes up, goes to one single point, and that is the all-seeing eye. Today, whether you're conservative or liberal, both sides, both parties are compromised. Period. Period. The goal is the removal of the true God to eliminate the word power of Jesus Christ. So the so-called Christian church did this through religion, including Catholicism. Liberalism on the other end of it, basically in its style, <clears throat> by choice, by lifestyle, and through the indoctrination of what they believe is to be truth or liberalism or love or whatever you want to call it, because in reality, they're one of the most hateful, crazy people I've ever met. I'm sorry, they're whacked. Why? Because they're demon-possessed. Right now, demon possession is at an all-time high. Demon infection is running right behind it. And this is how the end of, the, the, the end of times comes, to, comes about, basically. So, in any case, the supporting of the killing of the innocent. Now, I cannot talk about the deaths of the wars without talking about the war on children. To date, in the U.S., this year alone, 796,459, as of 4 o'clock today, aborted babies. Total counted since 1973, 59,912,455. 455 as of 4 o'clock p.m. today. Now, thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ, for grace and forgiveness. Now, this is crimes. This is a war against children. This is the elimination of the next generation. This is the elimination of doctors, of people that would have a political stance, that could have been the spouse that God had for you, that could have been your friend, could have been your brother. Do you understand? This is unacceptable, and war in itself has done the same thing. Think of all the loss of lives in these wars that have taken place that now the, the generations and the people that you could have known are not, they don't even exist. God's plan was thwarted. The spirit that was to be transferred in did not. 
or however he does it, maybe defaulting to another one, I don't know. But in either case, this was never God's plan. So the war on children is every bit as fierce as the war on humans, period. Because I told you, demons hate children more than they hate the adults. The blood that has been spilt in all of these wars and all the abortions would cause the rivers like the Mississippi to flow. Think about that. When we had the invasions against the Germans and the landing of the on the uh, on the uh, shores and the machine guns that cut everyone down the blood that was in the ocean so so saturated it that sharks for a hundred miles came to lap up and finish off whatever the Germans didn't do they don't talk about that I mean I the chaos and 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 this was what 70 something years ago so the soldier who in their honor and duty and I do honor them because they're here for a reason but unfortunately misused so we honor them the ones that they use to destroy humanity we rebuke the New World Order the Rothschilds the Belderbergers the Rockefellers all the ones of the original 13 families and the 300 families so we have a few thousand who basically put the whole world in peril to eliminate seven billion. So seven billion are controlled by a few thousand. I mean, that's just bizarre. How does that happen? Make no mistake about it, we are all in this together. The problem is, those who support their parties, either liberal or conservative, are deceived. I've talked about the great deception, I've talked about lies, I've talked about lying spirits, I've, I deal with it all the time. And when you really true see, truly see evil as it is, you start to understand the framework, how they work, how they manipulate, how they operate. So anyone office who is put there to continue the good cop, bad cop game is there because they wanted them there not because you voted them in demon possession as I mentioned is an all-time high and demon infection running after it means that as we move forth and into this new times here that those that you knew and loved and were friends with things are going to change and just remember that everything that you've been taught is a lie whether it's been history, whether it's been science, whether it's been the foundations of religion, because of the things of the doctrines that are out there now keep us from being who God intended us to be. This matrix runs so deep that most will never know they are just a part of it. And not just a part of it, they actually support it. I tell you now, we are out of time. Now, how much time? I don't know. But the spirit realm has breached the physical. The amount of people that I have dealt with that, that talk about things that happen in their bed and in their sleep, being taken out of their body into the astral realm, visitation by demons, even their spouses manifesting at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and the demons speaking to them. That as I mentioned, that the loved ones that you knew potentially will turn on you. Now, I'm not trying to weird you out or make you paranoid. I want you to know who you are. I want you to stand. And when that happens, you rebuke it. You bind it. You take authority. You do not allow. Do you understand that? If you are married to this individual, you are one flesh, and you have the authority over their demons. And hopefully, if that is you manifesting that your spouse knows enough to do the same thing because there are so many of you that still have your open doors I hear it all the time and really you know you can only make it right with yourself right now meaning that you repent you renounce you ask for forgiveness you break you bind you rebuke you do self deliverance now I've put a lot of material out there 
I've had some people that have been wanted me to request to, you know, teach a little bit more on deliverance. Well, you know, it, it, if you're expecting something that is intricate and it's it's more involved, what I have written is the simplicity of deliverance. It's not complicated. It first starts with repenting. Now, I am going to be doing more because there's it's just going to have to be the way it is because like I say I've done some alternate changes in my ministry you know no longer have the office and so forth so I will do what I can but I want you to stay firm stay firm in the truth and again do not deny who you are do not cower you have not been given a spirit of fear know who you are you are a child of the most high God you are an heir to the kingdom you are here for a reason. It is no mistake that you are alive in these days. And these days, though they will be perilous, that if God's hand is upon you, that he will divinely guide you and direct you to the truth. So do not sell yourself out. It would be a point of no return. Just ask the Hollywood stars, the Hollywood so-called elite. Man, they're falling apart at the seams. They're going nuts. You know, I, I can't feel sorry for them. I wish no harm in anybody. But you know what? God promised a way out for all of us, and they made their choice. So there's a choice to make. And that choice is to know what side of the fence to stand on. Because those who oppose Jesus Christ, those who do not believe unto him or reject him, are cursed. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. So when I say Jesus plus nothing, that is what I mean. Now, again, how long do we have? I don't know. But it's a short time, at least compared to eternity. Now, with that said, as I continue the shows as I try and gather more information and write more and, and complete what I've tried to start some years ago that I got tied up for doing so many deliverances that the information that I give isn't just because of research it's because of experience now I've been doing this a long time and so I stand in, in what I say I stand in what I believe because I have seen it come to term. I have seen the actions of evil. I have seen that when there is rebuking and repenting and renouncing and casting out, that there is a, a change that not only takes place in the physical, but in the spirit. And if you think people can't change, yes, they can. There's an old saying, the leper can't change his spots, and you can't teach an old dog new tricks. No, it's a matter of the heart. Do you, did you hear what I said? It's a matter of the heart. We humble ourselves. We understand that there is a God. He's in control. And that he can stop our next breath at any time. We do not fear the one who kills the body. We fear one who can cause us to have the second death. And because of the, the narcissistic attitude today in this world that we are gods and we can become gods, you make me puke. You don't even know what a god is. You, you know, you're, you're a piece of dropping on the sidewalk that someone walked their dog and forgot to pick it up if you think you're a god compared to what a god is. Now, this is why we humble ourselves. Because there was a great humbling that I had to do. When I realized what evil was, when I saw it myself, when it manifested in my apartment in 1993, because I was dabbling in the occult, because I was trying to do astral projecting or at least transcendental meditation, that in either case, when I saw that there really was evil, then I had to conclude that there was good and that was God and there was truth. And there was no question at that point. And when I realized that and came to that understanding that the seeking and the drive that I had for the truth was the most intense 
change an alteration in my life and I and I've talked about this before that people who knew me in the past said you know how wound up I was you know I, I basically you know uh, uh, I, I'm not even sure how to explain it but when people saw me after I had received Christ and believed on to him and read the word and did everything I could they could not believe the peace that was on me oh I can still you know have some stank in my attitude let me tell you when I see unrighteousness when I see someone being abused and when I see someone being taken advantage of and lied to and so forth it just makes me cringe one of the worst things that anyone could ever do in front of me is to disrespect somebody else this respect in me, I can deal with that, and I'll let you know that. But when I see somebody, especially another a veteran, I'm not a veteran, but to, to see a veteran, to see an elderly, to even see a child who was abused or to be taken advantage of, to see someone who's less fortunate, maybe in their um, IQ, so to speak, maybe they're not quite, you know, the sharpest tool in the in the shed, and then someone comes in and takes advantage of them gyps them out of money, teases them. You know, children, when they're in grade school, can be very cruel. And most of that comes through ignorance because no one really, really has an idea of the harm that they're doing. But that is certainly damage that can take place and deep root into an individual's soul. And many of you went through that. Now, I talked and told that there was a time that we were teasing some kid when I was in the third grade. And that kid, when we got back into class, he broke down and he started crying. And the teacher was one trying to figure out what was going on. And he said, nobody likes me. And the guilt and the shame and the conviction that came over me still holds to this day. I realized that our actions and what we do and what we say to others is is like a, a knife in the back and 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 I even got a taste of my own medicine too later and I don't like it and we need to understand that today that when we have people who truly are trying to do right who truly are righteous who are who are victims who are being gang stalked whether it's through government programs or whether it's demonic stalking because that is taking place and even both that because we're so segregated or we're so hung up on different things we neglect our brother and because we're neglected and neglecting that we're segregated and so we're prone to fall we're prone to be taken down a house divided cannot stand and so please you need to understand that this is no time to sell out to to be listening to these other broadcasters that I've been trying to tell you about go to my goathead wall of shame and look at them and I'll try and post some more on there that anybody who does such thing or anyone who practices such thing will not inherit the kingdom of God and that means that they are an enemy of God I've talked about people who are wicked I've talked about people that continue without repentance that in their narcissistic uh, antisocial or even uh, psychopathic behavior that they are a threat and they infect the very people around us now when we come to the understanding that some people that have become infected became infected when they entered into a church and people laid hands on them and there was demon transfer that should tell you that the so-called house of God is not the house of God that something's wrong when we look at our government who lies to us who has Jesuits that run CIA who have Luciferians that that basically monopolize, monopolize and run the FBI the ones that continue to do the occult behavior even in sacrifices whether it's in Texas whether it's in Las Vegas, whether it's 9-11, whether it's whatever it is, these are sacrifices. 
This is the, the shedding of the blood of the innocent being offered up to the demons, the ones that have elevated or lifted themselves to a place that they believe that they that you need to worship them. That when we look at evil, when we look at what is supposedly good, and I've talked about this before, that even in your own stance, that because of all the things that have been done to you, all the lies and all the betrayal and everything, that we tend to get hardened and we tend to move over towards a different direction than what we were originally based. Because we were all children at one time. We had the innocence of not knowing pornography, not knowing drugs, not knowing hatred or any of the other things in this world. Though we were born to sin because of the fall of the garden, that these behaviors that are learned, that as a child you didn't have them yet. But somewhere along the line, something went wrong. And with the indoctrination today, with those who believe that pedophilia is okay, that in this crimes against children, the, through the abuse, through pedophile, through you know molestation and rape and all the other things that are going on, that the, the youth and the children today, there's a war on them to alter and change them to really be uh, the enemy of those who were good and we have a responsibility to protect them to pray over them to guard against any evil that wants to come to them because if we do not one we're going to be held accountable the other is that they'll be made into our enemies how many of you have children you don't talk to anymore or maybe you you yourself were so rebellion that you ran away from home or you know you didn't talk to your parents and now they died or whatever and now there's this gap or this hole in your life well see that was never God's order see this order meaning that of of love and truth and honor and integrity as I mentioned for the posting on blog talk that your yes was yes and your no was no and and when you said that you were going to do something uh, you're saying that you were going to do it was the contract and that was an honoring time that you fulfilled it and so we have a generation World War II which I consider heroes but even though they were lied to and they were used they're one of the last ones that were keeping out this wave of evil that in their strength and in their integrity, in the honor that was known, and of course there was always bad eggs, we find out that Hell's Angels was really post-traumatic stress World War II victims. That these young men were so messed up and so screwed up and then couldn't fit in, couldn't adjust, and then Hollywood gets a hold of it and, you know, they, they bring in all the movies to make look, look at, you know, like it's... Uh, uh, something to appeal to well no wonder we had hell's angels we had you know post-traumatic stress which was called shell shocked or uh you know then there was battle fatigue and and as i mentioned even all the way back to the civil war of soldier's heart that in either case what we have is the breaking of the spirit causing them to to, to try and survive every minute of every day in any way that they can and if they have to do it through anger if they have to do it through acting out then this is a this is a sign of crying out help me and so the soldiers that we have today both men and women are crying out what we had in World War II they were crying out what we had in Vietnam what we had in Korea and then now we have those coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. And the government, who was not here to help us, is allowing them to kill themselves, allowing them to suffer, putting them in battles and wars to maim them, to break them, to keep them from being anything that would be worthy to you and I 
Now there are some who are tough. There are some who are willing to fight. And unfortunately a great deal of them are broken to the point that they're taking their own lives. And so tomorrow I just want you to uh, remember them. I'm going to be remembering them as well as my father. My father too was what they called shell-shocked. He was post-traumatic stress. My uncle said that when he came back from the Pacific, he was on a ship that was uh, attacked many times by the kamikazes, that he just looked off into space for six months. And he didn't receive help. He didn't receive the things that he should have. And he had the night sweats. He had the night tears all the way through up until I was an older man. And then when he died in 2000, which was 2011, because of, like I said, he entered in the hospital 2010 and then over November, December into January, then he, then he died. But in all that time, he suffered. And all these, and I, and, and I didn't understand it. I had no clue. I wish I did. Now I do. But in either case, if you can do something for a vet, if you can pray for them, if you see them on the corner and they need something, you know, they're looking for food, look, they're, they're, they're not just missing the limb, they're missing a part of their soul. And that was by design. They were victimized by the New World Order. And so let's pray for them. Let's lift them up because they, they need our help and we need them. Boy, I tell you what, you get a hardened soldier, you get someone who knows how to fight in battle, one that no matter the bullets are flying you know, over the head, that they're still willing to jump out of that foxhole and charge. That's the one I want next to me. So if you served in the military, God bless you. You know, just like the movie I mentioned the other night, thank you for your service. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, um, it's different, but it is a, a good uh, example of what's happening to our young men and women who are coming back. And so with that, uh, just understand that if you have children and they've entered the military or they're becoming of military age, the assignment is to break them too. With no draft right now, talk them out of it. Because the people who go and they come back are never the same. All right. I hope that I have done justice with the vets. Just think of all the lives that have been thrown away that were sacrificed. It's beyond comprehension. And unfortunately, there are more that are going to die. And it isn't going to be ones and twosies, tens or hundreds, or a thousand to ten thousand. It's going to be in the millions. So make yourself right. Get ready. Because I tell you what, as I said before, evil does what evil is. And what evil does is it comes and it still kills and destroys. And we are the targeted ones. All right. God bless.